Introduction to MongoDB The agenda of this discussion would include an understanding what exactly is MongoDB at a very high level, where does MongoDB fit into the CAP theorem, why is MongoDB very popular, when to use MongoDB and when not to use MongoDB, and the competitor products of MongoDB in the market. Now what is MongoDB? Obviously, it's a NoSQL database which was initially released in the year 2009 and it was developed mainly using C and C++. It's based on document object model for data storage. It fits into the CAP theorem, which actually incorporates the C and P. Now the C and P of the CAP theorem. C actually stands for consistency, which also means it's going to be strict consistency or hard consistency model. All the clients will have the same view of the data stored across multiple database servers. And for your quick information, MongoDB is going to be a distributed database which actually has more than one database servers which has the data stored in it. So consistency here comes into picture. Whether the clients which try to read or write data into the database servers, do they actually get a consistent view is the question out here. And MongoDB definitely offers you a hard consistency or a strict consistency model by default. Now P actually stands for partition tolerance. The system actually works well in spite of data being spread across multiple machines in the cluster. Which also means that the performance does not deteriorate on scaling. That is, even if you try to add more nodes to the cluster, the performance of the system does not go down on increased data loads. It's also to scale out the cluster size without having to worry about the downtime of the system. Or meaning, it might have a very minimal downtime or absolutely no downtime whatsoever, or simply represented by the letter P in the CAP theorem. Popularity of MongoDB According to the survey in the time period of 2014-15, MongoDB seems to be the most preferred or the most popular NoSQL database out there in the market. There are close to 150 NoSQL databases, out of which 50% market capitalization is going to be MongoDB. There are several reasons for its popularity which we shall be discussing in the upcoming slides. If you have a close look into this distribution chart, MongoDB actually tops the list followed by Cassandra and then we have Redis and HBase which are closely competing with each other. Let's try to understand some of the key features what actually makes MongoDB one of the most popular NoSQL databases in the market. The list actually can be quite exhaustive when we try to compare it with a lot of other available competitor products but however we are going to discuss about like four to five key points which is very important to actually have made MongoDB a very popular choice among the users. The first thing is going to be it's going to obviously very easy to set up and get started. It has a relaxed set of rules for schema specification. It's not tightly bound to any kind of schema rules in fact it's absolutely free from schema. So people who actually come from the world of RDBMS and MySQL databases will actually have a big sigh of relief out here. An intuitive data structuring which enables it to store both semi-structured and as well as unstructured data. However, it can still store structured data. And this option of storing semi-structured or unstructured data was not available in the traditional RDBMS systems. Its query language is on very similar lines with SQL which makes it easy for the SQL developers to almost make a seamless switch. This is one of the main reasons why MongoDB actually has had more than 50% market share in the world of NoSQL databases. It's suited for most general purpose enterprise application needs which does not need or involve any kind of transactions. Remember, if we need to have a system which requires transaction support, then it needs to be asset compliant. Since MongoDB is a NoSQL database, it is actually base compliant. A MapReduce feature is actually built in into the MongoDB framework for processing large data sets in batch mode. This is a very interesting feature of MongoDB. Mind you, there is no direct integration for this MapReduce feature to actually work in MongoDB when compared to Hadoop, meaning your MongoDB comes with a built-in package for running MapReduce tasks without actually having to worry about integrating MongoDB into Hadoop. 
However, in the recent years, MongoDB also supports Hadoop integration, which makes it even more popular in the world of big data, especially for analyzing large data sets involving batch workloads. This is actually a quick glimpse about like MongoDB versus any commercially available RDBMS system. In this case, we have chosen MySQL as a comparison and this slide is pretty much self-explanatory. MongoDB use cases. MongoDB actually can be used in a wide set of use cases. The list actually can be very, very large. However, these use cases are not the exhaustive set of use cases, but a very popularly used areas where MongoDB actually can find a perfect fit. In the areas of machine generated data storage, any kinds of log storage and analysis, backing up data from RDBMS servers, high frequency trading data in the financial world. Note that it doesn't involve transaction support here. Storing and analysis of biometric data, data from product catalog and e-commerce web stores like Amazon, analytics related data and data from insurance claims, call records, etc. Any application which needs low latency data access, applications which require a very high read and write throughput at high workload conditions. So these are all pretty much the common use cases of MongoDB. When not to use MongoDB? MongoDB was designed keeping in mind to be used in most commonly used enterprise applications, which does not involve any kind of transactions. An application demanding transaction support obviously needs the asset properties to be fulfilled and MongoDB is an OSQL system and by default, it satisfies only the base properties. It's more like a general purpose NoSQL database which fits into almost every kind of enterprise use cases barring a few niche use cases. For example, a social media data, for example, a company like Facebook, which is trying to store and work on social media data would require a specific NoSQL database, which is called as a graph database, which is going to be the best fit in that case than to actually use a document model, which actually is MongoDB. Here, MongoDB can still be used, but it will not be very effective like using a graph-based database, which also belongs to the category of NoSQL databases. Do not use MongoDB for performing complex real-time analytics on big data. However, it's a good fit for lightweight real-time analytics on medium-sized data as well as on large data sets. Do not use MongoDB for small data sets, especially if they are well-structured because MongoDB is actually a clustered architecture. There'll be a lot of resource wastage if you try to use MongoDB for storing or retrieving and analyzing small data set, especially if they are structured. In that case, it is recommended to stick on to the traditional RDBMS solutions. Who are the MongoDB competitors? CouchDB, Couchbase, and MarkLogic are the top competitors of MongoDB since they fall into the same category of MongoDB. That is, they all are document-based databases and they all satisfy the C and P in the CAP theorem. Summarizing whatever we covered in this lesson, we try to understand what is MongoDB at a very high level. Where exactly does it fit into the CAP theorem? Why is MongoDB very popular? When to use MongoDB and when not to use MongoDB and who are the competitors of MongoDB? Thank you.